All right, Aurora Knights, here's the deal. Today we're talking about what I would say is the biggest franchise comeback ever. That I stutter. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm about to show you just exactly why Metro Dread is that impressive. Here we are now, everybody, reviewing what many may say is one of the best games of 2021, and to end the year off, we are going to review Metroid Dread for the Nintendo Switch. Metroid has never been in the biggest mainstream when it comes to Nintendo itself, and I think this game has potentially changed that at all. It may still be niche for the time being, but I think it's going to become much more popular in the coming years below, especially when Metro Prime 4 comes out. We're talking about a game right now that has just been nominated for Game of the Year in the Game Rewards, and so many others even exceeded sales expectations and even boost up sales of the franchise as well. Now, of course, that does not determine the quality of the game, whether it's good or bad. Our thoughts and experiences do which is why this series, EXP Reviews, is all about. That's what we'll be giving you in this video. If you are new to the channel, welcome. And if you want to join me and other Arana Knights, go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell below. Not everybody knows much about Metroid, except that it's a really awesome series. So how about a brief rundown? Metroid is a veteran Nintendo franchise who gets its intention intermittently. It starts off in 1986 by the late Gunpei Yokoi, who is also the developer of the original Game Boy, and Yoshio Sakamoto, who is still running the franchise. Of course, the first game came out in 1986, but the second entry doesn't get released until five years later on the Game Boy itself. Metroid starts off with Bounty Hunter, more so a mercenary named Samus Aran, who investigates the depths of the planet Zetas to find and destroy the mind of the Metroid species called the Mother Brain. The franchise has spanned 12 story games, Dread included, into the exploration with first-person and third-person 3D entries, plus one pinball spin-off and two remakes. Metroid has another series within the same universe called Metroid Prime with the same protagonist, which takes place between Metroid 1 and 2. Then you have Other M, which takes place between Metroid 3 and 4. Metroid 5, obviously, is a Metroid 4 sequel, also called Fusion. Dread definitely takes place in a much later point, which I am about to get into right now as we start this exploration. As a warning, I must advise that one of my new goals is to avoid major spoilers, as I really want to show off that this entry is worth it in your gaming library, and for newcomers, a great way to start their love for the Metroid franchise. However, some spoilers may be unavoidable for this review, so watch at your own risk. If there are truly no objections, then we can finally press start and play. Metro Dread marks a new story entry in the 2D plane, as you play Samus Aran, who has been sent to the planet ZDR to investigate an ongoing spread of a parasitic species called the X. For those new to the franchise, here is an explanation. Dread is considered Metroid 5 amongst the 2D game entries. What has happened is that the X series were known from Metroid 4. The events were told in the beginning of this game as Samus Aran got infected with a parasite and was able to recover and get immunized for future infections. In Metroid Dread, this fight against X continues at the point of the game. Samus loses her ability during an enemy encounter called Raven Beak, and is guided by Adam, or AI counterpart, to return to the ship in the upper surfaces. But she is stuck in exploring ways to work around and to regain her ability so she can escape the planet. Throughout the game, you explore in a non-linear 2D plane from one floor of the depth to another and back to get to the upper levels. In continuation of the storytelling through gameplay, Samus runs across the Emmy robots for the same mission as her, as they were dispatched by her client, the Galactic Federation, a space military team. It shows that the Emmy becomes hostile, so Samus will escape from them as they are indestructible without an energy force that Samus gets when defeating sub-bosses. Otherwise, you will get caught and killed in one hit by the Emmy if you fail to escape it, adding to the challenging difficulty. Galmir to stick, 
Just like the traditional 2D Metroid, you grab items and explore the places that can't be passed through before grabbing certain items. It keeps the non-linear exploration there as the rightful traditional charm that has no place of leaving. However, you do get cutscenes as a means of storytelling as well. Uniquely, it is done mostly without dragging dialogue, except for a few. You do get a cutscene that expands the lore of the Chozo tribe, which is the tribe that Samus herself was raised by. It is the one cutscene that is dialogue heavy, but worth hearing out, and it does explain the true enemy of the game Raven Beak, who is a Chozo warrior who has gone rogue and caused the enemy to become hostile, and for Samus to lose her powers in the beginning of the game. Even though the game is somewhat challenging, even on normal mode, you do have plenty of save stations as checkpoints, which I will say seem to exceed the number from previous titles of the franchise, along with replenishing statements to keep missile ammunition and health in check. It also makes up for it by the amazing scenery and graphical performance of Metroid Dread, especially for Nintendo standards. With great lighting and textual detail, I have no doubt that this may have pushed the limits of the Nintendo Switch hardware. The intention to detail is tremendous, and the very stable 60 frame rates per second is icing on the cake. To get about 6-8 to eight hours in on the first playthrough with the difficulty is what I was able to get across. That's a neat length for atmospheric storytelling, fan service, and some new renditions of the soundtrack. Metroid titles in 2D has come across usually a 3 to 6 hours runtime. The nostalgia was done right without excessive amount of copy and pasting from old games, and the developers' fearlessness in adding new features and elements. I was right to let you live during our first encounter. That one glimpse you showed told me everything. All in all, by Metroid Dread. Even if you are new to the series, it's a long time underappreciated series who has finally gotten the redemption it deserves for amazing graphics, old fashioned video game storytelling, and atmosphere that may definitely play a good role in the gaming industry and Nintendo to finally give Metroid the rightful attention it deserves. Mercury Steam, the developer of Metroid Dread and Metroid Samus Returns, is given the staple developer into the Metroid titles for the future, I would hope. It's now time to see Retro Studios, Metroid Prime 4, and more Metroid to come along the way. Thank you for joining this 10th episode of EXP Review and the last video of 2021. To join and watch more, check out the channel, then subscribe and click the notification to be caught up with future videos. Remember to keep on playing, and I will be back for more.